I made cozies to fit two different sizes of bowls. One is a larger bowl in which we would heat up pasta or meals like that. And the other is a small, maybe a four inch, maybe a five inch wide bowl. Um, I like to heat up soup in that. My husband prefers to use the bigger bowl for whatever he's heating up. So we needed different sizes cozies. So I'm measuring out 11 inches square here and then I'll be cutting. I did mark all the lines. I just didn't want the video to take even longer than it already is. So here I'm cutting with my rotary cutter. Here I'm finishing up cutting this first square, the larger one. And now all I'm doing is I'm tracing around the lines instead of measuring all again. So I'm just trace around the lines and then I'll cut along those lines. I won't show you all of that because you get the idea. So now I have the two larger squares cut out. Here you see the larger bowl. That fits in there nicely. That was the first test one that I made. And then I made two more to fit those bowls. Here I'm showing you the smaller bowl and I'm going to use a smaller ruler for that. I'm going to use an 8 inch ruler for these smaller bowls. So I'm removing the handle from my rulers from the larger one and putting it onto the smaller one. And then I'll measure out the squares for the smaller bowls and cut those out. So I'm going to put my markings on here. I'm going to fold my fabric in half exactly like this and just finger press it down so that it stays while I'm measuring. I measure one inch up and two inches in from the side over here. So two inches there and one inch up from the bottom. And then I take my ruler and I just draw a line across here. And I do the same thing on this side. So again, one inch up from the bottom and from the side. And then I mark a triangle. Then I fold it the other way. Because this is already quilted, I don't need to do anything else other than measure these things. Super, super simple to do with the serger like this. So, one inch from the bottom, two inches from the side. Mark a triangle. One inch up, and mark that triangle, and that's it for my markings. Now that this is done, I'm going to sew those corners. I'm going to zoom in so that you can see this really well. So I see that my triangle is here. I'm going to place this under my presser foot. And I'm using this guide right over here at the edge because that lines up with my second needle, which is where the seam is going to be. And I start sewing along the seam. And of course the knife cuts off my excess. Give myself a tail and then I cut that off. Do the same thing over here on this side. Again, lining up this notch. This is a vibrant, but you can do this with any serger. So I've lined that up there. You may need to push in your fabric a little bit more than usual because it is already quilted. There. And 
I turn it so that I can see the markings on the other side, which are here. Again, I place this under my presser foot using the notch as my guide, ready to pull my factory dip. Matching up the lines here, placing this under my presser foot so that my line is in line with the notch. Okay, so that's all of those seams sewn. Now all I need to do is serge around all my edges. That's very simple. Put my first edge under there and I go around the whole thing in one go. At the end I only have one of those tails to sew in. Okay, so and now I just make sure that my fabric is lining up here with the edge of my plate. I want to make sure that my tail from before is to the right so that it will be cut off and secured. When I get to this section, because it's moving out a little bit, I just make sure that it's running straight along with that ledge. If it doesn't, you'll get a gap and you'll have a problem there. But as long as you hold that straight, it will work out perfectly. And you keep searching until you get to the end. Then make sure that your needles are off your fabric. Oh, just turning it on another couple of times. There. Okay. And then I make sure that my needles are in the highest position. I lift my presser foot. I pull and then I place the fabric under the presser foot again, right in front of those needles so that I don't end up with a tail on the corner. I put my presser foot back down and I continue surging. And again, I'm lining up with that silver edge or the edge of the foot here whichever works for you. And as I'm approaching where this dips out a bit, I make sure that my tail is in here on to the right. And I hold my fabric down straight. To the end, I let it go off the fabric turn so that my needles are to the highest point, lift my presser foot again, just pull slightly, and then again place my fabric right at the needle, if you can see that there, and then continue. And again, I hold my fabric straight here. Sew off the edge of the fabric, lift my needles to the highest position, lift the presser foot, and we're on the last edge. Whoops. Place my fabric underneath. Lower my presser foot. Sure that my tail is in there. I don't know where it ended up. Here it is. Hold the fabric straight. And now I'm going all the way down to the end. And I'll chain off. 
Okay, so that is all of the sewing. It's all done. All I need to do now is secure my ends and it's all done. So now to secure my ends, all I need to do is using the non-sharp point of my uh, needle, I'm pulling through my needle threads. I like to keep white thread in there so it's easy to find them. Once I've done that, the looper threads will release. I can cut my needle threads. And then I thread my needle with my looper threads. So there, just pull those through. And then all I do is I sew through those stitches, pull it through, and then I can cut this off. That is secure. And then I just continue and do that for all of those tails. And that's all there is to it. I forgot to mention my settings. My stitch length is set at 1.5. My stitch width is set at 5 over here. Um, and then my tension is based on the fabric that I'm using. Thanks so much for watching. Hope this has been helpful to you. Please subscribe to my channel and tap the bell so that you don't miss any upcoming videos.